Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of HVAC system design tutorial with the channel of the world of building design. Um, I'm excited to introduce this new series of uh, hydronic system um, uh, design and hydronic uh, system introduction in this series of uh, tutorials. Um, and we would like to uh, focus on the hydronic system, how it works, what are the components of a hydronic system, where this is used and uh, what are the different type of hydronic system. So this is going to be very introductory um, you know, tutorial and uh, we would like to um, you know, be familiar with the component of a hydronic system um, in the HVAC industry. If you know normally a medium in the hydronic system, a medium like the hot water or chilled water is distributed in a uh, open or closed loop system and provides the cooling or heating for a building or a facility. So uh, we have to provide some form of heat transfer between the heating or cooling medium, uh, which is normally a liquid form medium, um, to uh, the terminal units uh, or uh, components where locally provides the heating and cooling uh, into the building. Going to uh, you know the basics of the hydronic system, there are a different type of uh, hydronic system, especially when we look at the piping system. Uh, we have the piping system that are um, you know constructed in series loop or in manifold system. Uh, there is direct return system, there is reverse return system, and then there are um, primary, secondary, or tertiary systems and um, in the later in the other tutorial we get more into uh, detail into primary secondary system basic and how the fluid flow works in a hydronic system and then at the end of this series of hydronic system um, we will look at the system sizer which is a, a tool that uh, HVAC system designer use for uh, you know, quickly sizing the pipe system or identifying the flow or um, the heat transfer rate and, and many other calculation which uh, helps you uh, that you don't need to go through um, you know, lengthy calculation through the softwares or through manual calculation. You can use the system sizer and quickly use that sizer uh, for, for getting uh, your calculation uh, you know, read through that sizer system. Um, so as you can see, it's highlighted in red are the agenda of today's uh, tutorial. So we're going to go to look at some schematic of this type of systems and how it works at a very, very high level schematically um, you know, in this uh, session today. So the piping system, as we said, consists of a closed loop and open loop system versus the transport of the uh, medium for the for the purpose of the heat transfer would take place so in this tutorial the focus would be on the closed loop system so let's look at the series loop in a hydronic system so if you look at the this loop in here you have a hydronic system so there is a boi boiler in here and I'm just introducing some components in here in this loop. So as you can see, it's a closed loop system. The piping is all closed throughout. So you have a boiler, you have a air separator in here, you have a pump where the cursor is, you have the incoming domestic water line, and then you have an expansion tank. We will discuss in further detail the application of each individual components in a hydronic system at the later tutorials. In this tutorial, I just want to introduce high level what is a closed loop series uh, loop system would look like. And then we have, um, in addition to this component, we also have three components up here, which are uh, our local uh, terminal units. For this example, let's assume that these are um, fan coil units or they are, um, say, um, perimeter radiator units or radiant units. So in a hydronic system with a series, 
all these um, local uh, radiant units or these um, terminal units are installed in par installed in a series as you can see so where i can highlight here your hot water is generated in the boiler and is transporting this way as you can see get into this pump and then from the pump it's pumped into your or your first load in here and then the heat is transferred to the space surrounding the space and then the medium you know loses the temperature or loses its heat and then it becomes colder and comes through this line i'm going to just change this to a different color here um, and then gets out comes into the second load and then gets out of the second load and gets into the third load and then exits from the third load back into the into your boiler okay so this is a cycle or this is a loop that is keep on uh, cycling into the loop and then there are some control strategy we're not going to focus on that uh, and as you can see you initially enter some hot water in here perhaps something around 180 degrees Fahrenheit and then at the last you get you know a lower temperature at 140 or something like that and comes down into the boiler so the loads or this uh, radiant heats or this local terminal units are installed in series so that's why this loop is called a series loop okay so that's the first arrangement of a hydronic system that you can encounter the second type of a hydronic system is, is a manifold system. In a manifold system, as you can see, there are some uh, form of uh, T connection between the load and your main, main loop. So the main loop, the hot water again, is transferred from here, is created by the boiler and transported through the loop, through this pump. As you can see, it comes to here and then it goes up and then the return comes down and the return comes down here goes back in here and then goes up and then comes down and then that this continues so this t's as you can see is the manifold it's basically the manifold between your loads or again the same local terminal units it can be anything it can be a um, fan coil or radiant heat and then eventually a colder uh, medium comes back to to your boiler and hits it up and comes back into the system so this is also a kind of uh, series type but in this case it's manifolded it's manifolded through the this t's as you can see so this is a different arrangement or manifold connection type and apologies for the the d that is missing from this um, you know this term here manifold with the d at the end in the next option that we have for the connections we have a direct return system what it is in the direct return system is that you supply the hot water to your boiler into your system through this pumping so the hot water is generated in the boiler and is served through this pump and comes to this first line and it's first going into the hot water comes to the first load and then at the same time comes to the second load Remember that this is happening all in parallel because when the flow moves through this line, it gets into this first load at the same time gets to in the second load and it at the same time gets into the third load. When you get the water into the first load, the first medium that is returned is returned from this load back. When you supply the first load, the return line, the return medium comes back to, from the first and then the return comes from the second load back and then the return comes from the third load back so basically what happens is the minimum load is coming here first and then the second one joins it and then the third one joins it and then this load comes back into our boiler so in the direct return what's the difference here is because the next the next type i'm going to explain you is the reverse return the difference here is the diameter or the size of the pipe that serves the medium into the first load is the maximum is the maximum uh size so what i'm talking about is this line here so that the the size of this 
pipe right here is the maximum in here but the return line size at this same location at this same location is the same so this line of the supply of hot water and supply of return water are the same size at this point so that's the direct return system so when we get into the so that's another example of the direct return as you can see that when you have the supply water all of this are served at the same time this is not a series distribution anymore this is basically a uh, parallel distribution now so we have to remember that this is now a parallel distribution so this returns are all coming at the same time so the size at this line and the size at this line are the same at right at this point so that's the direct return type of hydronic system so this is this is commonly used in the industry HPC industry but um, we have to remember how the distribution works so the maximum uh, size of the pipe handles the maximum flow of the medium and the distribution happens in a parallel basis and same thing happens with the return with the maximum return at this point so in the same points they have the maximum supply and maximum return size and as you move and you distribute the flow you size the pipe with the lower pipe diameter because um, you know you're, you're distributing less volume so you need to size your pipe uh, proportionate to the uh, size of flow that you're distributing we will discuss all of these topics in the later tutorials in the reverse return condition in the reverse return condition what happens is when you distribute the uh, hydronic or your medium on the supply side in here you serve all of this at the same time or well, the supply would be all at the same time the size of your pipe in here would be the maximum size of your pipe because it's going to be the sum of all of the flow distributed to all of these different loads these are your loads at different spaces regardless of the location these are the loads at different spaces but what happens is what happens is is on your return side because as soon as you supply to your first load in the reverse return condition you have to get a return from that line so that's going to be the minimum size of your line and then you get the return from the second then you get the return on the third and fourth and fifth so what happens is the maximum the maximum size of your return happens right here not at the beginning remember that you could just make it arbitrary if you make a line here you would see that in the uh, direct return you had everything distributed in parallel and then the return was a maximum right here at this point okay because because the the return was all happening in parallel at the same time but in the reverse return condition you had the first line returned second line and to the third line and then you have uh, the pipe size increasing as you get to the last load and in the supply side the pipe size decreasing as you get to the last point so that's the difference between the reverse return and the direct return um, you know piping arrangement in the hydronic system and there are benefits to this arrangement that we will discuss in the future tutorials it's going to be more lengthy and more detailed uh, in-depth discussion on why the reverse return is used and what are the specific application for this type of systems then we get into the primary uh, secondary and eventually tertiary so when you have a boiler system initially the boiler is responsible for heating up your uh, loop load so if you have a load here if you have a boiler system the boiler system distributes your hot water generates the hot water and distributes it through this pump into the slope this to into this uh, into this loop and then you have a return from this first loop coming back to your boiler so the pipe that you have in between this two right here 
it is your decoupling. So if you look at right at this corner, at this intersections, this is your decoupling. So everything on the bottom is your primary load or primary loop. So we're talking about primary, secondary, and tertiary system. So your primary system is right here in this in this area. As you can see, that's going to be your primary system with a pump and a boiler. Of course, this is a very schematic to look at, but that's that's how we have to show it at this level of discussion about this system. And your secondary loop would be, I'm going to highlight the secondary loop just so you can see what's the difference between the secondary loop is. So your secondary loop starts from starts from here. Let's just change the color here into this color. So that's going to be your that's going to be your uh, third your second your second loop. So this is going to be your second loop. So that's going to be your second loop. That's your second loop. Okay? And then your third loop or tertiary system loop would be this pumps this pumps that eventually serve another local load somewhere else. So that's going to be the supply, that's going to be your return, supply, return, supply, return. So this is going to be your tertiary load. So this is basically a primary, secondary, tertiary. It means that your first loop is your boiler, distributes the hydronic into this loop, as you can see. Okay, so let me change that also to a yellow. That actually I should have done that as a yellow as well, just not to make any confusion right here. So that's, I don't want to create a confusion so you can see what it is like that so that's going to be right here okay so the yellow is going to be your primary your purple is going to be your secondary loop and your tertiary loop is shown in the red color and what it is very important in this topic about primary secondary tertiary is the decoupling the de decoupling points are very de the loops are interconnected to each other. There's a different topics about what has to be used about, uh, you know, in the decoupling points um, that we discuss in the future tutorials. But in here, just for you to know, right at the intersection of the secondary and primary, this point is going to be your decoupling, where the connections are. And then on the tertiary, secondary, this point where the prime, secondary and tertiary are separated from each other will be your decoupling point between your loops. So, okay, so that's, that's very important. In the next tutorial, we're going to talk about primary, secondary system basic, how the fluid, uh, you know, movement works in a hydronic system how the, uh, you know, the hydronic is distributed and we'll get into a lot more examples to get you, you know, get your hands on this type of uh, distribution in the hydronic system. You will learn a lot about uh, this type of system in the coming tutorials. If you have any comments or any suggestion, any questions, please feel free to send it into the YouTube link under the uh, tutorials if you're interested to get access to any of these handout and presentations, please uh, send a direct email to me uh, or uh, provide a comment uh, under the YouTube uh, channel uh, specific videos. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe in this channel of the World of Building Design by pressing on the notification button. You will get the tutorials as soon as they are posted. Thank you very much.